Welcome to Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. We've just received a missive from Commodore Edward Arkwright. You will find that the Mediterranean Sea presents its own variety of unique challenges. The winds can change rapidly and will vary greatly from one area to another. The same can be said for your potential opponents. Formidable Spanish warships, powerful French or Ottoman frigates, as well as light and fast Barbary and pirate vessels may be encountered. The Admiralty has decided to offer you a third-rate ship of the line, a perfect ship for these conditions. Though if you would instead prefer to equip a different ship to your own specifications, funding can be provided. Commodore Edward Arkwright. We're definitely going to take a new third-rate, HMS Agamemnon. Very nice. So our fleet, which was responsible for daring acts all across the globe, has now expanded to a fourth third-rate ship of the line. All of them are ardent classes, so we keep a nice homogeneous feel across our fleet. We have a couple of extra frigates. HMS Falcon has been with us for a very long time. And I have plans to institute a naming convention once we get our next ship of the line. One that's larger than a third rate. So as soon as we get a second rate, we're going to customize the naming. For now, we're just filling out the crew of HMS Agamemnon with as much experienced crew as we possibly can. Just in from the Europe Herald, bleak days are upon us. Toulon has fallen and fierce fighting has broken out throughout the Mediterranean. Thankfully, due to John Jarvis's efforts, thousands of souls were able to escape Toulon and were spared the guillotine. The fighting in Corsica also appears to be coming to its conclusion with French forces being driven from the island. 28th of December 1794. In spite of all of our victories, the French continue to beat us strategically. While distracting our fleets, they deliver food from the America to starving France. They appear to be withdrawing all of their warships to the Atlantic. While the fleets were manoeuvring, our squadron discovered the French Light Squadron under the command of Rear Admiral Pierre Jean Van Stable. This is a great opportunity to weaken the French fleet and regain the initiative. And so that means we're taking all of the strongest ships that we can possibly take. We have a lot of slots to fill. Uh, I was hoping to stack up on just two sides, but apparently we need to fill each of the contingents. And I don't want to bring my troop ships. Not to a, a very strong battle. I'm assuming it's going to be a strong battle. So we'll need to redeploy. We need to put... I'll put two ships of the line on this side. So we'll go Arrogante and Hippo. Parma and Agamemnon. Or, no, the frigates. No, Agamemnon. <laughs> Alright, Falcon, Sibyl and Relius will be a, a flying squadron of sorts. A bit small. Not expecting them to do much. We have managed to capture elements of the French Light Squadron isolated from the main body and our ships have begun to engage them. The French are holding their line and seem to be expecting reinforcements. We'll be in trouble if the entire squadron shows up. Or will we? Our ships are at full sail to join the battle. If we can inflict significant damage here, we'll make it much easier to fight the French at a later stage. So onward to battle. I'm very confident today we have four third rates. I did see a very large ship far off in the background, but I'm not too concerned about him here. We're going to smash this light squadron. Hippo and Arrogante at the fore of this attack already engaged. It makes it much easier for us. They are trying to cut in front of us. They are faster ships. Sir Valente, Courageous, Artemis. Artemis? Have I, I think I've already captured Artemis once before and ransomed her back to the French. That's interesting. Anyone that's watched the episodes recently, let me know if that was the case. I'm pretty sure Artemis was captured, possibly in America, but who, yeah, anyway. Running ahead of us, they are turning away, showing me a juicy stern there, but I will continue the, the fight with the second of the line. Keeping it fast, we are taking a fair amount of damage on Hippo. The French are known for using fairly heavy weapons on their frigates. 
Although there's no real way of knowing what your enemy ship is carrying. You sort of just have to figure it out. If you get close to a little ship and he hits you with really damaging shots, you've got to assume that he's got carronades on or something like that. All right, we're going to go and recapture Artemis for the second time. Say hello to her new captain. No doubt the last one got the guillotine. Palmer and our other friend, the Agamemnon, are making their way up towards our ships. Oh, Aragante is on fire. That's not good, and we are also in a boarding action. The worst thing that could happen... Oh, the fire has spread. I was just about to say that. Please do not destroy both of those ships. Okay, we've captured it. We need to get someone over to the other ship to get fire control. Some sort of damage control underway. Courageous has managed to put out her fire. Aragante is still on fire. And I'm pretty certain we're just about to capture Artemis for the second time. Unless she's a new ship that's been renamed as such. I highly doubt it though. Alright, we have managed to deal with the Light Squadron. We do have Medusa out the back, just sitting there, stalled up, wondering what the heck just happened. Sir Volante also wondering what just happened. Turning about, she's going to head back to her wave of reinforcements that are bearing down on our two ships of the line. Aragante, the hero of this campaign so far, still on fire. That is not a good sign. We need to get... Th there we go. The fire has come under control, thankfully. And now the plan of action is to get Courageous out of here. She's a prize ship. She's heavily damaged. She has very low morale despite having our own crews on board. And that would be due to the state of the hull, I assume. Sir Volante is taking a lot of fire from Aragante. And meanwhile... It looks like a suspiciously large ship leading that line, heading up to us now from the Norwest. It looks like a ship, possibly a second-rate ship of the line. That's a lot bigger than what we've seen. It looks a lot like the Hector. If anyone doesn't know who the Hector is, Hector was one of the first really large ships that we've come across, and it did a lot of damage to our frigates. So we've got a second, a third, a fifth, and what looks to be a second, fifth rate, yes. So a fairly strong squadron. Our freshly captured ship, Artemis. I'm having a strange sense of a deja vu from this ship. She's going to take some shots at her flagship of the squadron, Audacity. Or Audacious. I have a good name for that one in mind. Once it becomes ours, once we assimilate them into the British fleet. I had a comment recently saying that I was acting like the Borg of of the Age of Sail. And I liked that reference, so we shall become the British Borg. Our priority will always be to seize the assets of our enemies and integrate them into the British fleet or to increase our own reputation. Sir Valente in a lot of danger, taking on water. Lots of damage there. She's exposing her stern. Artemis is going to have to put up a fair amount of fight. The Audacious is bearing down on her hard. And the Audacious has a lot of, a lot of sail power. She's heaving too now though, hoisting some sails. Trying to slow down. No doubt trying to wait for the rest of her formation. My goal is to get rid of this last little damaged frigate. And then we'll assault the main line. We'll sort of just cat and mouse the French second rate. I'm pretty confident that I have a speed advantage. She's pretty laden with crew. And both of my engaged ships of the line have low crew. So they would have lost a fair amount of weight. Just by getting those men off and on, onto other ships. Medusa is proving to be a pain in the butt. Getting some round shot into her stern. Doing a lot of critical damage. The Courageous seems to be taking on water. 
and simultaneously has no planking on the starboard side or the port side. I can't tell which side that means. But either side is wrecked and it looks like she may, may soon sink. Trying to put the sails up. Oh, the water is crossing the deck. She's going to sink. Courageous has sunk. There we go. Artemis is just getting in the way of Aragante. I just can't seem to get them away from each other. Sir Valente may soon go the same way as the Courageous. That means that we need to get the crew from the Courageous back on board another ship. Can't leave them stranded at sea. They are t taking some fire. Fortunately, their former ship is blocking that. Medusa has now taken a substantial amount of damage while we looked away. Artemis is now running ahead of Aragante. Sir Valante has detonated a plume of fire reaching to the heavens despite the rainstorm that we currently reside in. Le Permier is going to face off Audis Audacious. First rounds of the engagement out towards Audacious for those ships. They haven't really been involved with anything really too tough. Agamemnon is a brand new ship. Slowing down slightly to try and take on board those crew. They are the crew from the Hippo or the Aragante as well. So we're actually stacking extra crew into Agamemnon, which makes her probably better for boarding. We will keep that in mind. And as the ominous boss music starts, Audacious makes her advance. Agamemnon is sitting still right ahead of her bow. Not the best position to be in. Hippo is coming about to follow up. We're going to have a bit of a, an S shape pattern here so that we can have two lines of ship fighting at once. Although Palmer seems to have wanted to attach herself to Aragante, so I'm not sure what that's going to do. I wanted them to run down in an S. Agamemnon's taking shots to the rear. She's taken rigging shock. Audacious really wants to take the wind out of her sails, so to speak. And if, if we get, take a few more hits like that, she could very well cripple Agamemnon. So we have to give her something else to bite on. Both Aragante and Hippo are on a intercept course. Audacious is now sort of turning in to try and get a second bow shot on Agamemnon. Stern shot. I've been playing a lot of this game in the last few days. Another wave. She has switched to grape shot. Sorry, round shot. Speed it up a bit. Aragante is now engaged with Audacious. Going to move in a little bit. Like I said, we need to give her something else to fight. We don't want her to keep fighting everyone. Also, it would be disastrous if she was to able to fight on two sides. She severely outguns our third rates. A second rate ship of the line, you'd expect to have about 90 to 100 guns. Really depends on its layout and the nation that built it. A second rate can just be a ship that is no longer good enough for as a first rate, so it could be an older style ship. Now, my plan here is to really encircle her. Gently bring her into our nest and then devour her. Aragante keeping the, the bow shots on. Hippo is got a fair amount of crew missing due to all the boarding actions. Unfortunately, Agamemnon, who has all the extra crew, is nowhere near close enough to be able to board Audacious. We have to remember that we also have a third-rate ship of the line as her backup and two fifth-rates to deal with. Ultimately, we need to eliminate the threat of Audacious. 
I can't understate how much stronger a second rate can be in the right hands. We'll get some grape shot into her now to try and minimize those crew, because it's looking like Palmer's going to be the one to board. Unless we can somehow get Agamemnon onto a better line. And so Audacious is falling into our trap. We have her fully encircled. Four ships have their guns on her. We've got to keep the momentum up and keep her in the trap. She's starting to slip free. Meanwhile, we've managed to isolate her from the rest of her formation. That's exactly what we want. Meanwhile, Palmer is going to take a desperate gamble and board the, sec uh, the third rate ship of the line and get her out of the fight instantly. We do have a crew advantage. More experienced and higher number crew. She's starting to run. She, she knows what's up. She's been separated from her friends. And without their extra support, we can really run rings around her. And if we block her exit through the wind, she'll be forced to fight us. Palmer has capitulated. We now have a fifth, third rate ship of the line. And so we have managed to get rid of the strongest threat of her escort and also isolate her from the remaining frigates. This is going ideally. Although Hippo is in a little bit of trouble. She hasn't got enough crew to really be taking this sort of fight too audacious. I need to slow her up and get her out of disengaged. Slow her up, turn her away, and try and get some rear shots in. We have lost a lot of cannon on that side. They are, or, or are they submerged from being hit? Yeah, it looks like they were submerged. We were taking on some water from hitting Audacious so hard. Now she's going to come around again for a starboard broadside. Hopefully Aragante is the one to take it. Fortunately, that was the case. <clears throat> she's using grape shot and at that distance it wasn't too effective. And now the two frigates have run into each other and have been pushed away. Our formation is formed up into a perfect line again and so we can start this attack once more. I need to keep in mind that Audacious has gunnery advantage due to the wind. So we have to get really close on this side or come around on her port side. Very high stakes game, but I'm liking how our action plan is playing out. We've managed to spread the damage along all of our ships. The wind has now shifted to the northwest. And as such, Audacious is stuck in the wind, but she's going to use a little trick and she's gonna flip around really quickly. So we need to get Hippo behind her as fast as possible because she is probably our weakest ship at the moment. She's taken the most damage. She's the least amount of crew. The next would be Aragante, but I, I have faith in Aragante. I reckon Aragante will last until the end of this campaign. And as we crest around, we start our ensnaring moment again peeling off Agamemnon as the boarding ship. We do have five third rates, so now we can actually circle her while we board. I've got past her bow now, so she's got no way of escaping with the wind. She's on fire though. This is dangerous, but I really need a second rate in my life. Pulling up alongside, I need to bring the sails up so that we don't catch fire. We have caught fire. Agamemnon, our newest ship, has managed to take care of the fire. The boarding action is commencing. The crew of the Audacious scattered amongst the deck, but they are no match for the might of the British Marine. They have been outwitted and outplayed. And now the only task that remains is to head off after these frigates that got separated from their masters. which should be a fairly easy thing to do. And now I've just noticed something interesting. There's another group of French ships heading off the map, and it seems to be that they're chasing the Artemis, which is currently retreating. So there are three other ships off in the distance. For somehow they've decided not to participate in the battle and rather chase down the Artemis, the prize ship that we sent off on her lonesome. 
So unwitting, unwittingly, we've been able to distract the reinforcements and keep them out of the fight. The rest of it will just be a mopping up operation and it looks like that those French ships that came as reinforcements are now retreating. Jean Bart has retreated. I didn't see what Jean Bart was. I don't have enough time to go up there and have a look because we just want to finish off these guys, but... I'm very pleased with how this battle has come about. We have a brand new third rate and a brand new second rate in the form of the Audacious. I'll mop up these guys and I'll see you at the victory screen. So the French deployed 11 ships, but we only made contact with eight. Three of them ran off into the wilderness. Unfortunately, we keep losing commanders of that rank specifically. Arrogante, the hero of this campaign, spent 13 missions or thereabouts as the flagship of our fleet. She's definitely probably the hero of our campaign thus far. But now it's time for her to step aside and make way for the Audacious. The brand new second rate Barfleur class ship of the line who will become our new flagship. We're just filling her out with crew and she can take a lot of crew. She has 20 or so guns more than the Arrogante and they are much heavier. So I look forward to seeing where we can go with these larger warship classes. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I will catch you in the next episode of Age of Sail. Until then, Commander Tyrael, out.